I saw X-Men today. I haven't seen it yet. Although I did hear one very good thing about the end that made me so happy. There is one, well, there's one really, really good thing about the end. About yeah. the whole thing, really. There's just one thing that you're just like, oh my God. Oh my God, they did the thing. Put it, I can't believe they did the thing. Oh, put it this that way. That makes everything okay. If you just you, feel warm and fuzzy. If you didn't like X-Men The Last Stand, you're in luck. You're going to be happy. You're going to be very happy. If you didn't like X-Men The Last Stand, you're going to be really fucking happy. And you have uh, to stay till the end, 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 end. Oh, yes. Yes, that bit. Because you always stay after the credits. Not like the end of the fancy credits. Because, yeah. you know, like the Marvel has started doing it twice now. Like, yeah. you know, the Avengers had the end of the fancy credits. You had the Thanos scene. And then the end of the credits credits. You had the shawarma scene. Spoiler alert. Whatever. That movie's like two years old. Have you ever this noticed? This one, you have to stay to like the end, end, end. There's no like middle of the credit scene. So that fooled people and they walked out. But no, you have to you have to stick it out. Have you noticed like when Iron Man came out, there was a thing at the end of the credits and people didn't know about it. So they walked out and left. I understood that. And then at the end of Incredible Hulk, there's a thing at the end of it. But people were still OK. But by the time of Avengers, people are getting up and walking out the minute the credits are starting. And you just look at them like. Really? It happened with it happened with Captain America, too. And I'm like. Oh, you guys like know there's more, right? Guys, they're, they're, they're going to do a thing. Guys, all right. Watch it on YouTube a year from now. Why do they do that? The, the, the Marvel Studios is doing their version of Quicksilver. And I know. Witch, and this movie has their version of Quicksilver. Do they it's call really him Quicksilver? They call him Quicksilver in this one, or? No, they don't use that name. Ah, uh, they but just, they yeah. Do they do allude to his parentage mm. pretty directly. Oh, fuck Which you, Fox. Can, for I'm, I'm, Fox, I'm you need to give... Avengers, I'm assuming the Avengers will not be able to allude to his parentage, but will have the name, and they don't have the name, but they can allude to his parentage and so on. But it's the kid from American Horror Story who was, like, the teenage ghost that shot up his school in the first season. And he's really good. Like, he's really fun. And I don't know if it's true to the comic book character. Well, Petro in, really in the comics is a dick, so. Well, then, yeah, it's, it's about right. Yeah, he's, he's, he's a hilarious dick. Fox, you need to give Marvel back the X-Men. You would, Sony, you need to give Marvel back Spider-Man. Fox, give Marvel back the X-Men. Just stop it. Yeah, I think they did a good job with this one, though. Cause I like, know, but still. I mean, the, pro the, the, the thing you run into with the X-Men is there's so many mutants. There's such an infinite universe of mutants. And like, how do you work them all into the plot? And this movie doesn't worry about how do we work somebody through all the way through the plot. Like, they need X character for this section of the movie. You get that character for that section of the movie. And then they go home. Like, yeah. okay. they're not worried about keeping it everybody on the train for the whole ride and it works because of that all right you're saying they do a good job that's fine but tell me you would not want to watch hugh jackman act opposite chris evans i mean of course i would you, they, oh and hugh jackman gets naked did you know that honest, worth the price of, he, did he had the metal worth the price of admission itself he had the metal claws in that scene and he almost became mrs jackman actually he didn't in that Theme. Oh, and you'll know why when you see it. But I mean, do I want to see Chris Evans in a tight white T-shirt fighting Hugh Jackman and no shirt at all? Of course I do. No, they don't Preferably fight in a kiddie pool full of pudding. Oh, Captain America and Wolverine. They were in the army together in World War Two. Whatever. They could get in a fight. Killing all the Avengers got in a fight in the Avengers. <laughs> Not <laughs> all of them. The Hulk wasn't there. there. The Hulk wasn't uh, there. Hulk kicked the shit out of Thor. Yeah, but it was not all of them at the same time. Never mind. No, but they all got in fights with each other yeah. is what I'm saying. Black Widow and Hawkeye are best friends and they <sighs> kick the shit out of each other. I am just saying if Wolverine and, and Steve Rogers happen to like get in a fight and fall into a kiddie pool full of like chocolate pudding, who gets hurt? Everybody wins. You 
know I'm right. No, you're not. You make you 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 make you you make America sad with that. And I'm here to tell you, there's this there's this father who's uh, who's dying, I guess, and his sons have started this campaign to I forget what they're trying to get for him early. They're, I think they're trying to he's he wasn't able to see Captain America two in the theater. He's not strong enough, so they're trying to get him an early release of Captain America two on DVD. And they've gotten like all the Avengers stars. They created a hashtag called Cat for Strat because he's a huge fan. And they have all, like all the Avengers stars have tweeted pictures of them holding up this hashtag and they're trying to get Marvel Studios to do it. I'm here to tell you that if I ever end up in a situation like that, my campaign is going to be that scene. I want Chris Evans and Hugh Jackman as scantily clad as possible, duking it out in something sticky. You're a pig. Huh? You're a pig. Whatever. Just... <gasps> oh, Marvel's going to do it. They're going to give him the DVD. That's great news. Huh. Okay, so are we ready for, oh, God, this week? <laughs> Just in time for Memorial Day, this first one, no less. Are you ready? Oh, no. oh yeah, oh, no. I know, I know, I know. Let's not, let's not fuck with Memorial Day. Well, kind of, but yeah, it's it's one of those things where you're just like, really? Oh, are you ready? Let's see if I'm ready. Ready. Because I, I screwed this up. Um, where, where? I'm missing a shot. Where the? Oh. What happened here? Something's missing. Like the opening credit? No, but there's. Uh, we'll, we'll just deal with it. Here we go. Oh well. Okay, fuck it. We'll just we'll do it live. Each week, Catherine goes out in the worldwide interwebs, finds all sorts of horrible stuff, brings it back here for a little segment we like to call "What the fuck is wrong with you?" And oh, this week, crazy. I I'm. So, have you ever thought about meeting the president? The, I mean, the actual the idea of you know you're in there officially with the president. And, you know, it's it's a sure. And it's it's a big deal normally. You know, the whole idea of you're you're you know, you're on your best fucking behavior. It's the president. Yeah. This is I. I'm not sure this is how one attempts to meet the president. Oh, head out of the way. I need to send her the link. There we go. This is this is not how one goes about meeting the president. Naked man tries to scale fence. Rested wow. in front of White House. This is a whole new level of naked crazy. The rest Friday afternoon happened after a man tried to get by security, then stripped naked. He was tackled to the ground by the Secret Service. Uh, photos of the arrest showed at least four Secret Service agents pinning the nude man to the sidewalk. An identified man left nothing to the imagination as he stripped all the way down to his socks. One of the security gates, about 3 p.m. Um, the man was at this is the man was adamant he had an appointment with the president as he yelled and removed his boxers. I have a very important meeting with the president. I have the president. I am the president of No Pantsia. I because it here they they tackled him on the sidewalk. Yeah, and you can clearly see that he's face down. Yeah, and he's naked. Yeah, so he's got like some serious river rash on his dick right now. Also, the. Couple things. Yeah, number one, don't fuck with the Secret Service. They do not screw around. Yeah, they they did not come to fuck around. They don't have time for your they shit. We'll shoot the motherfucker out of you. They are trained literally to take a bullet for the man in the White House. That's what yeah. they do. That's, That's the level of badass you're dealing with. These are the people that signed up to take the job that involves jumping in front of a bullet. 
for somebody they might not even like, somebody they might not even have voted for. Doesn't matter. That you being think the president's an asshole? Doesn't matter. You're going to die for that asshole. That being said, I don't think at any point during their training, their instructor said, okay, now there's going to come a day when you're going to have to be on top of a naked man. I want you all to prepare yourselves for that. I don't think that happened. Hey, you know, what happens in the Oval Office stays in the Oval Office. I, I don't... I, whatever, whatever kinky orgies go on in there. I seriously don't think that was part of the training regimen. I just, I'm not, I don't... Also, that's really, that's not the way to get your platform heard. Like, if isn't. you're a lobbyist for nudists or whatever you were trying to do, that's not the way to get things taken get yourself taken seriously. Like they actually do big block of cheese day. Like they used to do on the West wing. Like they, they, at least on Twitter, like they've started taking, like figure, get an actual meeting with somebody. <laughs> Although I'm assuming this guy didn't have an extensive plan. No, I, his plan. I don't know what the plan. Cause what was, what was the plan? Just go up and like, Hey, Obama. I've got a dick. Was that because maybe that, he has Barack Obama's face tattooed on his dick and wanted to show him? He wanted to show him Barack Obama. You're killing me. You're killing me. So, um. I was not aware of this. Apparently, this is a superstition that you're supposed to hold your bet your breath while you're driving through a tunnel. Have you heard of this? No. It's, it's like you know, it's it's a thing you, you hold. It, it's like you whistle past a graveyard or you know, you punch buggy or what. You're supposed to hold your breath while you drive. Through. You're I supposed to whistle past a graveyard. Well, I don't know if you're supposed to, but it's like I don't know. But it's one of those things. You're. I, we used to hit the roof of the like the inside of the roof of the car yeah. whenever we ran through a yellow light yeah something like that i i but this i think this is not like that old boner joke at all no they didn't I, I i think this is taking that whole bit a little too far man holding breath while driving through oregon tunnel faints causes three car crash Oh, my God. They say a 19-year-old uh, man caused a three-car crash when he fainted while holding his breath as he drove through a tunnel in Oregon. According to a news release, Daniel J. Calhoun told investigators he fainted Sunday afternoon while holding his breath in the Highway 26 tunnel near uh, the community of Manning. His car, a 1990 Toyota Camry, drifted in the center line and crashed head-on with a Ford Explorer. People were hurt. Nobody was seriously injured. No not life-threatening injuries. Well, that is a superstition that sure worked out, huh? Yeah, that, that did. That worked. That was perfect. Bravo. That worked. I think we've debunked that one. Oh, yeah. Myth busted. Do you know how hard it is? To, I have, I've actually tried this because I'm a guy and I'm stupid. Do you know how hard it is to knock yourself out while holding your breath? N no. No. Me I, One, because I can hold my breath for a pretty long time. Two, because I've never tried that. I, I don't have. Know why I would? I have actually why? tried to hold my breath until I passed out because I'm stupid why? and I'm a guy. Because I'm stupid and I'm a guy. I've tried doing. You can't do it. No. You, you have a survival instinct. Like you're 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 like the lizard part of your brain that doesn't let you just stop breathing and die won't let you just stop breathing and die so he was really going to work you can't do it he was really damn determined to pull he, this shit off i made to teach you that shit he pulled this off he was really goddamn determined uh, but why like wouldn't you think if you're driving and you, you fine you have to hold your breath going through the tunnel for whatever reason 
this flying spaghetti monster told right. him to, whatever. Don't you think, after a while, when you start to get a little woozy, you go, I, you know what, flying spaghetti monster, you will have to forgive me. I will make my penance and bathe in prego sauce, whatever it is that you do in that situation. I'm taking a breath. It's time to breathe again. I die. That oh, let me let's see if I can get this bigger so you can see what happened. The uh, the, the car they have a little picture. I can't see that. There's not a big picture. Picture's too little. But trust me, the car is fucked up. Of all the things to be doing while driving, I've never sat there and thought, you know what? I'd, I would be really great right now. Pass fuck out. That's how they do it in NASCAR. Are they sure he was holding his breath on purpose? Did he maybe stop breathing for some other reason? That's what he said. He was holding his breath. Now, if it was Jersey, I could understand. That's kind of a pre You kind of have to there. That's like. That's a, that's you do that to not die. But there <laughs> is also Dr. Connors. I don't get that joke. I don't either. I don't understand that reference. Yes. Because I said lizard? Oh, yeah, Doc Kirk Connors. Yeah, it's, uh, uh, it's an expression. You're like reptile brain, part yeah. of your brain. That's just all survival and you know, whatever. So, more bad driving. And this is one of those. Okay. Do you have red light cameras where you are? Yes. We, and they have really annoying little strobe lights in them that I imagine are a serious seizure hazard. I don't know how they get away with it. I am not. I, I, I haven't actually seen them around where I am, either here or in South Carolina, but I know about them. And most people, they're kind of like, they hate them because they like running red lights because they're assholes. This guy took it a little too far. Like, seriously, a little too far. Manuel Montero Herrera hit traffic camera and drove off with it. Oh. Uh, Herrera, 19, allegedly slammed into a pole with the traffic camera mounted on. When the pole landed in the back of his pickup truck, police say Herrera drove off with it. One witness managed to snap a photo. Mm. There he is. Back of the truck. I guess if they don't have the camera, they can't... <laughs> If they don't have the camera, they can't catch that, me. But I think that feed actually goes somewhere else. Yes, it does. Where there's a hard drive. But good try. The pole ended up flipping in the good back try. of the bed of the vehicle. The vehicle sped off and actually stopped at the next light. Turned the corner from the... <laughs> well, then what was the <laughs> Were you just trying to get to the next red light faster? No, apparently he left the scene of the accident because he was late for work. Been there. Because, you know, the later you are, the more likely you are to hit every fucking red light in the world. Yeah, I you know. That? Yeah. I, I, I work in a town where there's a red light approximately every five feet and every two and a half feet, there's a pedestrian crosswalk. And I swear, the later I am for work... The more red lights and pedestrians. It could be four o'clock in the morning. Nope, red and lights. There will be pedestrians and red lights and joggers and ducklings. Oh, what was someone in the channel said? Oh, damn it! He got just got a five five star bounty for the cops. That's not how you play Grand Theft Auto. It's not. No, no, no. It's no. not a live that's action. Not, that's not a LARP. Uh. Grand Theft Auto is never going to be a LARP. Herrera was Unless found. Society really deteriorates. He was found at a friend's house where he was allegedly trying to get rid of the camera. How? That thing is as big as the truck. It's as long as the truck, anyway. What Unless was the pole? What the fuck was he going to do with it? Hang a basketball hoop <laughs> What, officer? No, that's not a camera. I'm just, I'm working on my hook shot. I'm just, I'm 
We're just shooting some hoops out here. Yeah. Having some good clean fun. Are you ready for the jam? No, oh, it's... <sighs> you know, a long, long time ago, we had a story on here about a woman who was caught driving in Florida while attempting to shave her area. Yeah. Never let it be said that this show is not equal opportunity. Now, he wasn't doing the shaving. <laughs> Wasn't doing the shaving while driving. High speed, sharp things, and genitalia. Not a happy trinity. A man accused of exposing himself while driving his BMW reportedly tried to explain his behavior to a state trooper by saying that a recent wax job had irritated the skin around his genitals, forcing him to remove his pants. Hmm. David Forsket was allegedly spotted by at least one witness who said he was. Okay. You totally added a Freudian R there. Fosket. Uh, oh, Forsett is a Fosket. Yeah. David Fosket, sorry. Uh, was spotted by at least one witness who said he was exposing himself while driving westbound on Highway 16. When the state patrol uh, caught up with Fosket outside Burger King in Breverton, he allegedly was on the other side of the bushes in the east side of the parking lot. Now, I love this is a quote. Trooper Jay Oxier wrote in the investigator report that when Foskett was asked what he was doing there, he replied, quote, he had to fart and didn't want to do it in the car. What did you eat? What in the name of God did you eat that required you to be across the parking lot in the bushes with your pants off? If you ate something that required that much effort to fart in order to not kill yourself with the stench, don't eat that. Don't ever eat that again. I will say. Like, I don't I don't know if you've ever had anything waxed. No. Although I did have that one time where I dripped hot glue on my leg. I've had my eyebrows waxed. And I will tell you, when you rip hair out at the root, growing back in, it does itch like crazy. Yeah. Like, just as it scratches the surface of the skin, it itches like crazy. It's insane. Like, it's really annoying. However, so, I uh, kind of believe him. Uh, well, wait till we get to the next line. The trooper reported that but a that's what cortisone cream is for. Uh, or Benadryl or, you know, whatever. The trooper reported that a blue towel was found laid neatly on the driver's seat next to him to a box of open condoms. What the fuck? What is it? What it is? Uh. What, what, what are you using those for? I don't know. In your car by yourself. Uh. <laughs> what the fuck? So wait, no, he was he was exposing himself. No, he had itchy crotch. No, he had to fart. Dude, pick a story. Why, You're killing me here. Why condoms? I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I, 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 I applaud your devotion to safe sex. <laughs> what the fuck were you fucking? Yourself, if you're by yourself, you're you're pretty okay. You're you're pretty safe. You don't need you don't need to wrap it at that point. I don't think. I don't get it. I don't. I don't. I don't get. It. I don't get it. No. Well, okay. Let's let's cut more. Oh God. So we've had lots of these these stories where people have stolen stuff and and done horrible things and you know. At least the guy in this next story. 
was at least trying to be nice about it, I think. Just in a weird, weird way. Thief steals bread truck, makes deliveries in his underwear. I saw this one. Yeah. A thief boosted a bakery truck on the Upper East Side Monday, but instead of selling the $60,000 ride, he dutifully made the regularly scheduled drop-offs along the driver's route. Wearing only his underwear, David Bestar, 30, of, uh, how do you say that? Nanuet? Nanuet. Nanuet. Stole I don't know how to say Nanuet. A, I don't know how to say Nanuet. Stole a Grimaldi's home of bread truck full of $8,000 worth of baguettes, whole wheat rolls, and loaves of sourdough. He then followed the instructions mapped out on a piece of paper on the front seat, parceling out the baked goods to at least three restaurants and stores. Once he was done making the real drop-offs, Bastard toast, tossed loaves of bread out the window while zooming down Lexington Avenue. Now, here's, here's the humorous part of the story to me. Oh? Hey, you, you work at like a grocery store or a deli. Yeah. You're doing, you're, you're, you're on the morning receiving team. Uh-huh. Truck pulls up into the bay. You're like, okay, the bread's here for the day. Mm -hmm. And the bread delivery man gets out and he's wearing nothing but underpants. And you're like, well... Those weren't the buns we ordered. <laughs> God damn it, Tara. <laughs> you reached for that one. Actually, that one just came to me as I was talking. But just picture yourself, put yourself in that situation that you're you're waiting for the bread delivery and the man gets out of the truck. And, and, and the minute delivery. after that, I'd be waiting for him to pull out, you know, like a little boom box and start dancing. Like, do you comment? Do you point that out? Uh, I, I, I can't help but notice that you're not wearing any clothes. Yeah, you do know you're in your underwear. Yep. Here's your bread. Why? Of all, he What's won't... the etiquette in that situation when a naked man is delivering your bread? I guess he was looking you tip extensively. <laughs> I just, it... It's, this was a plan. I mean, he stole the bread truck. Somehow along. I think the owner, the owner of the company nails it. Or one of the delivery men, they asked him. I laughed out loud. I guess he really wants to be a truck driver. Like this was a real, just a go-getter audition. <laughs> That's not how you like, get a job. You have no even if I have no clothes, the bread will get delivered. I know the economy's rough, but this is not how you get a job. Again, it's not like Grand Theft Auto where you can just get in the vehicle and suddenly you're running the, the missions. Okay? Yeah. You know, in GTA, you can hop in the ambulance and you can go do ambulance missions or you can hop in the truck and... What? A real breadwinner. Oh. Total noir. Good one. Like the way you think. That's this. The, the economy's rough, but this is not. You, this is this is how you do it. And why his under? No. Why his underwear? Of all the. Yeah. That. Why this was in his head? All of this made sense. That's the scary thing. As he was doing this, none of this seemed abnormal to him. He's like, well, here's what we're doing today. Just another Saturday. I mean, the thing is, like, you steal a truck full of fresh bread. I'm not making those deliveries. I'm holing up in the back, going into carb coma on fresh bread. Because fresh bread is like the best thing in the world. I'm going to eat myself dead. I love how I steal a bar. I'm, I'm going to find a butter trough <laughs> and eat myself dead. I love how at some point he just said, fuck it, and started throwing the bread out the windows. Like, this is hard. Just you people pick the shit up yourself. 
Free bread for everybody. This, this, this delivery shit's hard. You guys sort it out. I'm done. Uh, now, it's rarely when I, I, I think. Have you ever noticed that any news story that adds a, that has a question in it? They, they normally already know the answer. You know the answer. We all know the answer. They're just putting it in there. Yeah. This guy done, did my job for me. I pretty much straight up and down did my job for me. Is this Britain's stupidest man? <laughs> Watch drunk jump onto railway line in a bid to stop an oncoming train. Oh, no. Fuel? No, he's fine. I'm going to assume he's over. I'm, yeah, I'm going to assume he's okay. So he's fine. Nice. Fueled by drinking drugs. This is the uh, man jumped into a fueled. railway. Fueled. Fueled only has one L. Uh, well, maybe it has two in England. I don't know. Closed caption television footage shows a terrified train driver only narrowly avoid killing moronic Nathan Barker. The 21 year old delayed 12 services for 90 minutes by dancing around on the tracks at Bentley Station. Parker admitted obstructing a railway and was jailed for 16 weeks by the magistrates. His behavior has been described as senseless by British Transport Police. We don't know why. <laughs> Apparently, uh, what was the, he, he wanted to get home and there wasn't a train, so he tried to stop one. Like a bus, like a taxi. No. That's yeah, that's how cabs work. <laughs> you can't hail a train. You can't hail a train. Wrong mode of public transport. You cannot hail a train. You can hail a cab. This could have been tragic. Yeah. This guy could have been turned into coleslaw. You know, when I was in New York in the whole subway system, I was people don't respect trains anymore because there was that kid that the conductor had to kick in the head to stop him from taking a selfie on the track. Like when I was a child, I was taught to fear and motherfucking respect the train. I when I was in New York, the subway, first time in my life, you know what? I was like four feet from the edge until the train actually got there. I was like, everybody's all up to the edge. I'm like, no, no, thank you very much. I'm back the fuck here. I'm not going into hole. People Somewhere along the line, we lost respect for the train. <laughs> it's, it's like we had a guy jump onto the tracks to retrieve an orange. We have this idiot. We have somebody idiot taking a selfie. Like they will kill you and it won't be anybody's fault. It's not that the engineer is a dick. It's that they are physically unable to stop in time. They need oh. like three football field length to stop in time. D.A. Scott, new movie idea. How to train your drunkard. That's bad. That's awful. I just don't know why we've lost respect for the trains. Mind the gap. You're doing it wrong. Like, they will kill the fuck out of you. Yes, because it, it is nothing but a hurtling bunch of metal and death. And it doesn't have a steering wheel. It goes one direction. They can't veer off and they can't stop in time and this guy did amazingly. Yeah. In fact, my, my brother-in-law who drives trucks told me if like that truck drivers, like big rig, 18 wheel truck drivers are trained that if some car cuts you off, like they're trained, they don't even try to stop. They're trained to try and hit you in the way that will cause the least damage to you. Because those things don't stop they easy. They cannot stop. It's they called cannot stop that quickly. It's, so they are trained not to try and stop, just to try and hit you in a way that won't kill you. It's inertia. It's physics. It's it, that, that the train driver deserves a fucking raise. Physics has no respect for you. No. Physics gives no fucks about you and your selfie and your stunts. Yeah. Neil deGrasse Tyson will tell you physics gives no fucks. No. Not a single one. People are saying trains cannot be stopped by the power of imagination. We all know that trains can only be stopped by the power of Sir Topham Hat. Hmm. I just it could. 
I have drank. I keep saying this phrase many times. I have drank a great many things in my life, but not. I don't know what the fuck you drink to make you think getting in front of a train is a good plan. It's not. It's not a. It's not a good plan. It's the bad plan. We are so close to the future of President Camacho and Al my balls. <laughs> World's just getting dumber and dumber, man. Uh, and I love apparently how he was dancing in front of the train. It doesn't want to dance with you. Don't get down there and fucking moonwalk in front of a fucking 40 tons of goddamn steel bearing down on your face. That shit might work for my running man away from it. Yes. Oh, my God. So, yeah, the first thing we learned tonight is you versus train train going to win. Don't fuck with the train. Because even if something horrible doesn't happen to you, you're really going to fuck up everybody else's day. Oh, God. He delayed services for 90 minutes. And oh, my God, do New Yorkers hate it when something fucks up the train. You know, if I had been the cop there, it would have been like, yeah, he did it. I'm just going to look over here for a minute. Y'all have fun. New Yorkers will shank you Mm. to keep you from fucking up the trains. Don't do it. Mm. Mm -mm. We learned tonight there there are ways to get a job, but actually usurping is not how it's done. Maybe in the Middle Ages... And even if you're going to do that, maybe wear pants. Maybe pants. Yeah, most of the ways of getting a job involve pants, unless that job involves a pole. Hmm. We we learned that, um... I don't know what... Well, we learned cortisone cream could have prevented... Yes, topical anesthetic. I understand that waxing itches. I get it, like... Hair growing back in itches. It does. They make treatments for that. Just for the love of fuck. None of them involve spermicide. I I don't think lube or spermicide are acceptable treatments for that. No. That that is to 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 go to the point where you're you're blaming a man zillion on the fact that you're trying to flash people is that's stretching Does it. the word Manzillion really have to exist? I don't know, but it's in the article, so I'm using it. It's legit. It's in it's in journalism. That's a, that's a dumb word. That is a dumb word. We learned that hit and run is bad. Hit, run, and take the shit with you is worse. Especially when what you've hit is a camera. Government property. Because it can see you. It knows what you did. I mean, respect for trying to destroy the evidence, I guess. <laughs> Where was he going to put it? That's n- that's not a way to get a bird feeder, man. That just ain't how you do it. That would be the coolest bird feeder. <laughs> you could like, set up a feed. You could like set up a feed and watch the birds eat from inside your house. It would be like the lazy internet man's bird watching. Uh, we've learned that uh, you can hold your breath as long as you like. It's not going to help you driving. Behind, not behind the wheel. Not behind the wheel. Save your stupid human tricks for when you're not behind the wheel of a vehicle or in front of a train or involved with any large hunk of metal that moves very fast. Yeah, that was another one of those moments where it's like, how did you not kill everybody? You fucking idiot. That was just divine intervention. So much luck. So much fucking luck. And finally we learned that number one, saying you have an appointment with the president doesn't make it so. And number two, 
The president does not want to see your penis. Also a good time to wear pants. Also a good time. <laughs> I, oh God, Tara, Tara, I literally just had to say the words, the president does not want to see your penis. Yeah. I just had to say that out loud in the really real world. I mean, I mean, he might. I don't know. I'm certainly not going to judge. 